Making your first simple cutting board is a fun process that you can complete in a short amount of time. For this cutting board, we're not going to worry about any glue ups, jointing, or planing. Instead, we're going to select wood that is ready for cutting and will need minimum work to prep for our project. You don't technically need any power tools to make a cutting board, as you can do everything with a handsaw and some sandpaper. For the sake of time, however, I'll show you how to make your simple cutting board on a table saw and some other power tools. The first thing we'll need to do is purchase some sanded three-side lumber from your local lumberyard or a big box hardwood store. I know lumber yards can be intimidating at first, especially if you don't know a lot about wood, but there's no better way to learn than to walk around and see the variety of wood species firsthand. In my experience, everyone at my lumber yard is extremely helpful and willing to give project advice to point you in the right direction. What we're looking for to start this project are some boards that have already been flattened and sanded on three sides, which should be labeled as sanded three sides or S3S. I recommend a species such as black walnut, cherry, or maple. Stick to these woods as they have a closed grain, which is ideal for cutting boards, and they will be easy to work with. Many lumber yards will have cutoffs at a discounted price, so you don't have to buy the entire length of board. As you're selecting your wood, just check that it doesn't have any warps or cracks. Now that you have your boards, it's time to get started. First measure out the length and width of your board. Then bring it over to your table saw and make the appropriate rip and cross cuts. Make sure you keep the flat side of the board along the saw's fence. With a coarse grit sandpaper, round off the edges of your board. Or, if you like a beveled edge, adjust your table saw blade to 45 degrees and make cuts on all sides of the board. We have saved ourselves time by selecting wood that has already been sanded. But if you still see mill marks in the wood, we will have to start at a lower grit. Mark your board lightly with a pencil and begin sanding moving progressively up to 220 grit. Next, we will raise the grain by spraying with water, letting it dry, and sanding one final time to 220 grit. We're at the final step. With an air gun or a tack cloth, clean the board of all dust and get ready for the best part, finishing. I'm using this mix of mineral oil and beeswax that you can buy online or at any home goods store. I will leave a link to it and any other tools I use in the description. Let the board soak in a few coats and wipe clean. You may have to repeat this process a few times if the board is dry. You now have yourself a fancy cutting or charcuterie board. Congratulations! If you don't have a table saw, you can use most other cutting tools such as a sliding miter saw, a circular saw, a band saw, or a jigsaw to cut your board to size. I like to use my jigsaw to cut rounded corners or patterns into my cutting boards, and the miter saw is useful for cutting off corners. If you have a drill and a set of Forstner bits, you can add a hole in your board to have the option to hang it. Make sure you drill the hole over a piece of scrap wood to avoid blowout. If you have a router or router station, you also have the option of making rounded or beveled edges to your board, which will give it a nice clean look. Thanks for watching. There are links in the description for all the tools you need for this project. If you choose to purchase through these links, thank you, as each little bit of each sale helps support this channel without any extra cost to you. Please subscribe for more videos, and until next time, enjoy some satisfying cutting board action.